Have you ever woken up and dreaded the idea of work or school or simply life? You convince yourself that what you're doing is for some kind of purpose, some dream, and yet you're barely able or willing to weather the path to get there. If that's the case, is that really your dream? Losing friends, relationships, balance, cleanliness, food, water, all of life's most wonderful blessings for work. Japan's population has been on a steady decline since the 1980s, resulting in a constant labor market shortage. On top of this, there were excessive layoffs and restructuring to adjust for economic collapse in the 90s, resulting in what we now see as intense pressure and demand that's put on the few workers who actually are present in the workplace, who are essentially taking on an immensely greater volume of work, an amount of work that often comes at the cost of their well-being. Let's just think of it this way. They've got the same amount of work to do as anyone else, but less people to do it with. So everyone is doing more. Just to add to it all, whether or not this is a result of this situation or if it just arose independently, Japanese culture generally values long hours as a display of hard work. Though this is not always the case, this is in no way a complete and comprehensive description of all companies across Japan, but in many company environments, leaving on time means you're leaving early, and leaving early means you aren't loyal enough to the company. We see this intense pressure in ZOM 100, where workers compare and brag about how long they worked for unpaid overtime together. Whether it's because they've convinced themselves that this work is their purpose and their dream like Akira, or because their manager demands extra hours for them, or if they see extra hours as some kind of competition and admire inemuri, as if sleep deprivation is a desired trait, it's a feeling of being trapped, that there's no way out of this. Societal pressures, workplace pressures, the pressures from yourself. That's how Akira feels in ZOM 100 bucket list of the dead, and that's what makes this show about a very fictional zombie apocalypse very, very real. But the one thing to gleam from the end of the world as we know it and the onset of the apocalypse is that, hey, I don't have to go to work tomorrow. It's an absolutely insane idea, and yet after looking at the conditions in Japan, I can't help but resonate with it. Though ZOM 100's depiction of Akira's company is an embellishment, there still lies a truthful foundation beneath it all, one that becomes painfully clear when you realize that Akira's company is based off of Studio OLM, where many of the animators of ZOM 100 used to work. Now we know that working conditions for animators in Japan is far from ideal, after everything we've seen with MAPPA and all the other controversies, it's one of the industries in Japan that's gained the most notoriety in recent years. And so whether or not this easter egg in ZOM 100 is a playful dig at the former company, or a genuine expression of the company's conditions for their past workers, we don't know. But considering what we see, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of this was rooted in real complaints. Seeing the sheer amount of anime being produced every season, it's safe to say, as mentioned earlier, that the volume of work far outweighs the amount of people that exist to work on it. But overwork isn't exclusive to Japan. In fact, Japan isn't even the worst of it, paling in comparison to a number of Asian, specifically Southeast Asian countries. Even in the US, we are no exception to having people overworked and not paid enough for what they're doing. And that's why it's actually so fun to see Akira's story pan out in the first episode and in what follows, because just about all of us can understand the sentiment, even if Yes, we don't have it as bad as him, that having no work means real freedom. That's something that resonates in so many people's heads, in our souls. Akira's story also evolves rather quickly, as it grows from him just having an indulgence in beer, free time, and motorcycles, and turns into a realization of what he's really been missing while he's been working. Himself. His passions, his dreams. Psalm 100 shows that work often builds you into someone you think you want to be, but it's only when you stop 
when you finally tell yourself that it's enough that you realize that that was never your dream. It was just work. Losing this burden gives Akira the chance to be the person he imagined as a kid. A superhero. A free spirit leaping from the rooftops, riding across Tokyo in his sweet motorcycle. It's one of the few takes in fiction where a zombie apocalypse, the end of the world, is shown as such an amazing thing, which is awesome. I mean, yeah, it's, it's horrifying to see these zombies and watch them eat people, but with the way they've made the blood to be this super bright pop of color makes it feel like this is almost a fantasy. A dream in a way. It's Akira's imagination running wild, as he's now in a world where he can finally do anything he wants, even if it means it's filled with zombies. For many of us watchers, this story about a person in a zombie apocalypse is somehow a breath of fresh air. It's a place we ironically want to be transported to. That's not something you see very often. It's because it depicts such a brutally real and relatable attitude towards work and the workplace in just the first episode that we sympathize and start to dream with Akira of what we could do in a place with no work, no limits. This isn't the zombie apocalypse or anything like that. If it were in any other setting at the end of the world, this story wouldn't change at all. No one cares about that. Zom 100 is just a story about freedom. And who doesn't want freedom? even if it comes at the peril of being chewed up and torn to shreds by flesh-eating husks of former friends and lovers. I know I do, as long as it means I don't have to go to work tomorrow. ZOM 100 is airing, I think, every week now on Netflix, so do give it a watch if you haven't already. I do recommend it. It's a fun, really fun show and pretty informative if this video's told you anything. I've made some videos previously on what it's like to work in Japan as a mangaka and as a Japanese animator, so if any of the topics or ideas in the first episode of Zom 100 interest you in any way, I'd recommend watching those just to understand a bit more and fully really get a grasp of the conditions in Japan and across the world, quite frankly, but in this industry specifically of anime and manga, it's really important to understand just exactly what's going on behind the scenes. So. Thank you guys for watching, as always. This has been the Anime Culture Corner. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future in-depth show manga and character analyses.